you, you came here with obviously some some high hopes. Um, how would you break down, you know, the good, bad, the ugly of this season, and just kind of how you got how you went through it? Um, season had a lot of ups and downs um, as a team, uh, personally, uh, and you know, I think you know I haven't had much time to reflect on it, but you know, just flying home last night, um, it it really hit me like. It was a it was a very very fun honestly a fun year um, with everything we went through guys in and out of the lineup um, you know it 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 one it builds character personally but also as a team um, I think at least in my opinion um, the team we had has never been through a lot of the stuff that we went through this year so. Um, a lot of the stuff that we went through was new things, and um, you can only build from it, and you can grow from it, and uh, you come back next year, and you you know you build off of that. Dante, I know you guys fell short; you didn't meet your expectations there. But as far as your expectations, your first season here, did they meet them? As far as the locker room goes, the coaching staff, the culture within the Warriors? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's why I made the decision to come here. Um, you know. I knew what, what I, I was getting myself into, um, and that's where I wanted to be. Um, it's what I wanted to be a part of. And like I said, all the ups and downs this year, um, you're never going to go somewhere and everything's just going to be sunshine and rainbows. You know what I mean? Like, um, So, like I said, I haven't ha really had time to reflect on it because I'm still kind of disappointed and frustrated that you know we lost. Um, but, you know, briefly, just very appreciative of everybody in the organization just to, you know, bring me in um, and allow me to continue to grow every single day on and off the court um, because I feel like I've made great strides on and off the court this year. How about meeting your expectations as far as your play and kind of your role? Because you were obviously one of those guys who stepped in for injuries and were in and out as far as starter, off the bench, certain things like that. Yeah, um, I mean, personally, you look at, like selfishly, you look at it as when guys were out of the lineup, that was my chance to kind of expand my role, um, grow um, as a player. Um, and I think <clears throat> for me, you know, the, the difficulties came when, you know, all those guys came back. Um, I think that's, you know, it's hard when you go, you know, Steph goes out and you step up and play an X amount of time and you're doing this, you're doing that. Um, and then Wiggs goes out. And, you know, you're dealing with Draymond's out and, and this and that. And, you know, <clears throat> I felt like I was always the one kind of like you never know what to expect um, with me. And uh, so when everybody came uh, came back, obviously, there's a little bit of an adjustment. Um, but we're a damn good team when everybody's back. Um, and that's what I you know, that's what I saw. That's what I kept feeling. Um, and like I said, it's funny, I'm not, not to, you know, quote Giannis or anything, but like the steps, you know, there's no failure um, in sports. Like the, the te steps to success, um, that's how I'm looking at this year. Um, how do we take everything we've been through this year um, and we build off of it and come back next year? Um, you, you obviously, you know, made your presence known during this season, but, you know, you have a lot of decisions to make this off season, specifically with your player option. How are you looking at this summer, and do you is there a, a is there a party that makes that sees yourself back here next year, and how are you looking at that um, going into this off season? How are you approaching that option? Um, I haven't thought to be to be completely honest. I haven't really thought that much about anything in the off season. Like <laughs> I thought we would still be playing right now. To be complete, completely honest, um, what I will say is I absolutely love being a Golden State Warrior. Um, the guys in the locker room, the coaching staff, um, the training staff, from day one, um, it's felt like home. Um, so obviously, I would love to be a Warrior. Um, but I'll cross that bridge, you know, we'll figure it out um, with the front office and everything. We'll cross that bridge once we get there. My goal, you know, this summer is to just get better. Um, you know, to be able to take a step next year uh, for the Warriors and, you know, try to expand even more um, to be in a system familiar with and, you know, just grow from there and, you know, uh, just get better as a player and as a man. Will that bridge be the Golden Gate or the Bay Bridge? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That was a really good one. Love it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, hey, Don, uh, yesterday I think you picked up your third foul. I think it was in the first half. But you, you guys had a lot of momentum at that point. Did you feel like that kind of stymied, you know, some sort of momentum that you guys had and kind of changed the dynamic of the game? I felt like a damn hack out there yesterday. Um, <laughs> but, no, nah, I, I, a little bit. Um, I think we were making a run. Um, <clears throat> forget at what point. But, you know, they were up 17. <clears throat> we, cut the, we cut the lead, I think, what was it, 10? Uh, the, Four. Four? It was in the first half? Um, yeah, and, you know, we were feeling good. Um, but obviously it's a 48-minute game, um, and things kind of go back and forth. It's a game of runs. Um, do I think that specific event changed it? Not at all. Um, but, you know, I think our physicality in the first half was, was, was good. Um, I think that's kind of the – the team that we need to be going forward is that physical team hit first and not let teams hit us. You've formed a pretty good relationship with Jordan Poole over this last season. Um, just how have you thought, uh, you know, being in the room with him, seeing him behind closed doors and stuff, how have you thought that he's just navigated this season um, with the brighter spotlight? Uh, I ride with Jordan till the wheels fall off, um, to be honest with you. Um, the amount of attention he has, um, spotlight that he has on him. Um, I've seen him come in every day and never change his work, work ethic, um, never change the type of person he is. Uh, and, you know, for that I have a, a great deal of respect for. Um, but the thing is he's still willing to learn. He, you know, um, he's still willing to accept, you know, different voices uh, for him to get better. Um, but the one thing about JP that I admire the most is his confidence. Um, it never wavers, and uh, we're definitely going to need that to go forward. Um, you can't have people out there that, you know, second-guess themselves or their confidence isn't at an all-time high. Um, and uh, I love I love sharing the court with Jordan. Um, and like I said, um, <laughs> no matter no matter what happens with him, he's going to come in the next day and always be Jordan. How do you? What do you think you need to work on this off season just to better grow your game and develop? What are some of those areas that you're focused on? Um, you know, just for me, it's kind of everything. I approach it in the off season. It's kind of everything. It's not one specific thing. Like when I'm, especially with this offense, especially with this, you know, this team, um, playing multiple different positions. You know, guarding big guys, guarding you know small guys playing point guard, I think that's the biggest thing for me that I want to kind of develop more is to be able to be, you know, the point guard at certain lineups and be able to run the, um, you know, get JP off the ball, let him run around, um, just do do other things that can help the team and be kind of more versatile for me. Um, I think it helps me personally um, get on the floor. Um, and two, I think it will help the team. Dante, how do you think <clears throat> yourself at times and then other guys like JK and Moses, just fluctuating minutes, not necessarily knowing when they're going to come, how, how long you're going to be out there. Is that difficult at times this year? And just how did you guys handle that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think um, I can speak for myself. Um, honestly, is like I said, when Steph goes out and Wiggs was out, um, was playing a, a heavy dose of minutes. I, all those guys come back um, from injury and stuff like that, and things change. Um, and I think, you know, with Moses, um, he was ready all season. Um, and you never know, but you know, you keep, you know, you keep tapping that rock. You never know when it's going to break. Um, and for him, you know, he, it didn't. The regular season minute wise wasn't, you know, in his favor. And then, you know, he stayed ready. And when his name was called in the playoffs, he was ready produ to produ produce, excuse me. Um, and the same with J.K. is, you know, J.K. is going to be just fine. He's, you know, such a talented player. Um, and he's, you know, he's learning and getting stronger every day um, mentally as well. Um, the league's not easy. Um, and, you know, you can get <clears throat> you can get swallowed up by the league in terms of you can get, you know, caught up in looking at what's being put out there. Um, but I think what J.K. did a great job of is although the minutes weren't going his way in the playoffs, he, he you know, he never wavered of what the ultimate goal was for him was to win games. And he knew how to be a really good teammate. Um, and I think that's the biggest growth for him that he's shown me in the playoffs was 
um, he still stayed connected to his teammates and he still stayed, uh, you know, into it because um, it's very easy to kind of drift off and I'm not getting X, Y, Z. And, you know, um, so it's, you know, you got to give him credit when credit's due. Dante, Alex, Simon from Bay Area News Group. You've played under some of the best coaches, college level, pro level, which is what, I guess, in this year <laughs> under Steve Kerr, have you been able to kind of take away from him, even playing experience, but even just coaching and kind of learning under him? Um, <laughs> he's one of my favorite coaches to play for, for sure. Um, you know, he just has an approach every single day that, <clears throat> he gives you confidence. Um, he's not a, you know, he's not a rah-rah type of coach, um, but he knows how to talk to you as a person. Um, he's not coming to you, talking to you as number zero on the court. He's coming to talk to you as Dante. And and I think for me, that was the, mo the biggest thing I appreciated um, when he needed to, you know, get into me a little bit. Um, he, he knew how to do it um, and he knew how I would respond to it. Um, so I think learning under him, my, you know, my basketball IQ just grew. Um, I think just seeing how he sees the game, it's it's always uh, it's always fun to play for a coach who played in the NBA. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing for me is to I learned more about the game playing under him.